Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Medical Minion. In this video, we are going to talk about some of the introduction part of microbiology as well as we will study the part of microscopy here. This is my video two. If you haven't checked the video one, the link is in the description. The video one consists of the themes of microbiology, which includes the subdivision as well as some of the basic part is covered there. So let's get back to this video. The word microbiology is derived from Greek word micros. Now let's study the meaning of word microbiology. To understand this, let's divide the word into two parts, micro and biology. Micro meaning small or tiny. Biology meaning study of life. If you put this meaning together, you will get the meaning of microbiology, which is microbiology is study of small life. Now what this small life is? Small life meaning organism, tiny organism that are present in this nature. And this tiny organism are known as small organism or small life, microorganism, microscopic organism, microbes as well as germs. Proper definition of microbiology is the field of study of all living organisms that are too small or tiny to be seen through your naked eyes. Now let's study what exactly the word microorganism means. So microorganisms are microscopic in nature, meaning they are small and tiny and require microscope to see them. And they live in unicellular, multicellular or cell cluster form. Now unicellular meaning one cell and multicellular meaning multiple cell. So what are the different types of groups included in microorganisms? They are bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae viruses and multicellular animal parasites like tapeworm and helminthes. Also a new group called prions is also added in this group of microorganisms. Now our next question is where to find this microorganism? Microorganisms are ubiquitous meaning they can be found everywhere like for example in water, soil, air, on stones, on your keyboard keys, on your pillow, on your bed, literally they are found everywhere. Interesting fact is they can live inside us or they can uh, live on us. So as you can see in the image. Now, how small these microorganisms are? Microbes vary in size from 10 nanometer to 100 micrometer to some of the macroscopic microorganisms. As you can see in the images, the viruses comes under the nanometer scale. The green color shows viruses. Whereas prokaryotes like bacteria, protozoa comes under micrometer scale. Helminthes are macroscopic and multicellular and they comes under millimeter scale and they can be seen with naked eyes. Now let's compare it using a logarithmic chart. As you can see in the image, a typical virus is of 10 nanometer size, which is little bit bigger than the protein size. So you can imagine how small the viruses are. Coming towards bacteria, bacteria, a typical bacteria is of size 1 micrometer, which is the same size of your mitochondria. And mitochondria is a cell organelle. So you can imagine they are so smaller than the cell. Now, how to observe this microorganism? So, to observe microorganism, we require artificial magnification. Artificial magnification meaning microscope. Now, what does this microscope do? Microscope enlarges the image of an object. Now, let's look towards the basic part of microscope. So, microscope have eyepiece through which you're going to see the spe uh, specimen. Then you have objective lenses. Now, objective lenses, there are three to four different type of objective lenses uh, based on power. There are divided as scanning, low power field, high power field and oil immersion. And you have objective converter. So you can convert from one objective lens to another objective lens depending on our need. Then there is a stage. On the stage, you keep the slide and your specimen so you can observe that. And below the stage, you have diaphragm to adjust the light intensity. And then you have the condenser that condenses the light. And also you have flat concave reflector that reflect the light into the uh, stage. So it can pass through the specimen and can make the image. Then you have 
arm to hold your microscope and the base of microscope uh, on which the microscope is constructed now let's look what does the microscope do or some of the basic properties and important properties of microscope so the first important property is magnification or magnifying power so what does magnification mean magnification is the ability of lens to enlarge the image of an object compared to its real object so it enlarges the image for example you can see i'm drawing here a small object what this ma uh, magnification means that it biggers the size of the images as you can see here if suppose there is a magnification of 10x that means the image appear 10 times the size of the object now microscope has three to four objective lens as i said before and there are divided into four different type depending on the power of the magnification 4x is the scanning field low power field is 10x high power field is 40x and oil immersion is 100x now there is a, a question in your examination to find total magnification so the formula for total magnification is equal to magnification of eyepiece into magnification of objective so for example if i have a scanning lens an objective lens of 10x find the total magnification scanning lens is of 4x and your objective lens is of 10x so 4x into 10x will give you 40x in the next slide i have put some of practice question for you so let's solve it together so uh, here it is given the magnification of objective lens and magnification of uh, eyepiece so you have to find total magnification so for scanning it's 40x as i told before 4 into 10x now you say me for low power field so in low power field the objective lens is of 10x and ips is also of 10x so 10 into 10 yeah it's 100 correct 100x meaning it will enlarges the image 100 times than the original real object for higher power field 40x into 10x will give you 400x oil immersion 100 into 10x it will give you 1000x so what happens as the power of magnification increases i have three images on 40x 100x and 400x respectively so in the first image you can see a small uh, object uh, in second you can see little larger and in third you can see the biggest in this three object but you can see as the magnification increases the image get enlarges but the area of specimen is less in the first image you can see whole specimen but in second you can see uh, some of the um, specimen but in third image you can see very little part of it so this is how the magnification works to be more specific let's take another example in this image you can see root tips and uh, blood cells of human so on 5x you can see the whole specimen or the whole root tip but it is not in that detail for 10x it becomes little and large and for 20x it becomes more enlarged and 100x it is the enlarged image here so on 100x you can see detail of each cell there and the area of specimen also decreases compare your 100x uh, image to your 5x the area of specimen decreases now on the screen you can see a beautiful image of nature as soon as i uh, zoomed it on the trees it get blur so here comes our second property of microscope that is resolution which is equally important to your magnification now what is resolution resolution meaning clarity image or high quality image so in this image of nature you can say it's getting blurry so the blurriness is not the high quality image meaning it has poor resolution exactly what is resolution resolution is the ability to differentiate two lines or points in an object as in different entities as you can see in the first image which is named as poor resolution you can barely uh, distinguish them as two different entities in the second middle image which is named as better resolution you can little bit identify yeah something different is there but you can't 
uh, surely say that these are two different entities in an image but in the third image that is named as best resolution you can definitely say the two different circle are there so this is how resolution works to be more specific here is another image the orange dot are differentiated with the d distance so this distance works with resolution the minimum distance between two points the greater is the resolution so you should always remember greater the resolution smaller is this distance between these two points or two entities now what is limit of resolution or resolving power so this is nothing but the limit up to which you can identify two object in an image as different entities so the formula for this is d distance is equal to 0.61 into wavelength upon numerical aperture the wavelength is denoted by lambda and numerical aperture is denoted by n or na now you should uh, be confused what is numerical aperture so now let's study numerical aperture as i said the notation is na or n numerical aperture is the light gathering capacity of objective lens so what is this so you can see in the image if suppose here is the light source and this light source is passing through your specimen here is your specimen and it goes to the objective lens and the objective lens catches some of the rays that are coming from your specimen and creates the image so this forms a cone of rays that are going inside the object and this is your numerical aperture in the second image it is more clear as you can see now the formula for numerical aperture is n sin alpha now what is n n is the refractive index and for here for this example the refractive index was air it can be water it can be vacuum anything and alpha is the angle between the rays and the normal some also say theta it's just the difference in notation nothing else you can use theta also you can use alpha also now let's study what are the different type of microscope in 12th standard you may know there are only two type of microscope simple and compound simple microscope only have one convex lens whereas compound microscope have two convex lens the eyepiece and the objective now based on the number of eyepiece there are three different type of microscope the first is monocular the second is binocular and third is trinocular mono by tri specifies that there are only one eyepiece two eyepiece and three eyepiece respectively now let's look into the type of microscope based on what they use to produce images like whether they use light or ultraviolet rays or they use electron beam or sharp tip like probes to produce an image so there are three different type of microscope light or optical microscope second is electron microscope which is so huge as you can see in the image and third is scanning probe microscope which is the advanced microscope here now let's study them in detail the light or optical microscope uses light to magnify objects whereas electron microscope uses electron beam to produce images and one more thing that they have electromagnetic lenses instead of glass lens for scanning probe microscope it uses range of tools to produce image of the surfaces and structure at nano scale level they uses the sharp tip that moves on the surface of the specimen to produce an image now they have subdivisions and subtypes so let's look into that light microscope provide magnification up to 10 raised to 3x and sometime it's uh, 1500x also depending on the case so light microscope uses visible or ultraviolet rays to produce an image so the first type is bright field microscope bright field microscope is the most common type here maybe you have used this microscope in your 12th standard also and this produces images on brighter background as you can see in the uh, sample uh, image the pink color is on your white background white is a brighter background so this was all about your bright field microscope the second type of microscope is dark field microscope dark field microscope is similar to your bright field microscope but only differs in the type of condenser dark field microscope uses dark field condenser 
whereas your bright field uses a normal condenser. Dark field microscopes are useful for viewing live specimen and they are very helpful for observing organisms that cannot be observed with direct light. And as you can see, they produce image on a darker background. The blue is on something black color. The third is phase contrast microscope. Phase contrast microscope uses two sets of rays. One is direct and another diffracted to produce the image. The application of phase contrast microscope is to study unstained living cells and structures like endospore. Also, you can see cell organelles here. The fourth type is fullerence microscope. Fullerence microscope uses fullerence strain to produce an images. They have various applications like they identify pathogen, distinguish between living and dead cells, and also they find location of particular molecules within a cell, which is called as immunofluorence. And it includes diagnostic techniques like fluorine antibiotic technique, detection of antigen, direct fluorine antigen methods, and indirect fluorine antibody method, which is for detection of your antibodies. The fifth type is confocal microscope, which uses laser beam to produce two dimensional image, as you can see here in the sample image. Now let's move on electron microscope. Electron microscope provide magnification from 20x to 10 to 5x or even more than that. It uses electron beam focused with magnets to produce an image. Now magnets is your electron magnetic lens, as I said before. And there are of two different types. Transmission electron microscope that uses electron beam that passes through a specimen to visualize small objects. And they are used to study small specimen or cell structure as you can see in the sample image. The second is scanning electron microscope that use, also uses electron uh, beams to visualize the surfaces and it is useful for three-dimensional detail of a species as you can see in the sample image. Moving towards the third and the last type that is scanning probe microscope which provides the highest magnification here. The magnification ranges from 100x to 10 rest to 8x or even more than that uses very short probe or sharp tip that are passed over the surface of specimen and interact with it to produce an image there are two different type of uh, probe microscope the first is scanning tunnel microscope and the second is atomic force microscope scanning tunnel microscope forms image of surface using physical probe that scans the specimen and it works best on this conducting material and the probe passes horizontally at constant distance above the specimen and it is uses are to view molecules like DNA. The second is atomic force and it is easily used over non-conducting samples and it consists of cantilever with probe at its end that uses to scan the specimen surface and it produces three-dimensional image. Now here is a comparative chart of all the types of microscope and it is easy to understand so you have to re uh, remember this chart the first is invention light microscope was invented in the year 1644 electron microscope in 1931 scanning probe microscope in 1981 the method of operation for light microscope and scanning mo microscope in all the three medium air liquid and vacuum whereas electron microscope works in vacuum only sample preparation for light microscope no much sample preparation is needed whereas for electron microscope the sample should be frozen and dried whereas for scanning microscope no such need is there sample condition in light microscope the sample cannot be too transparent so you will uh, do the uh, staining there for electron microscope the sample should be conductive compulsory it's compulsory and for scanning probe microscope the surfaces cannot be too rough now talking about the resolution horizontal and vertical resolution is provided by scanning probe microscope but only horizontal resolution is given in light on electron microscope and the magnification i have told before 10 raised to 3 for light 10 raised to 6 for electron and 10 raised to 8 for the scanning probe moving forward we have naming of organism we use this binomial nomenclature that is scientific naming system given by charlinus which uses two names for an organism the first is genus 
and the second uh, word is the specific epithet so they have four different universal rules which you have to keep in mind while naming particular organism the first is this names are in latin and written in italics to shows their latin origin second the first word always indicates the genus whereas the second word denotes the species or specific epithet when you are writing this name you always need to separately un underline this both the words this word should be typed in italics to show their latin origin the fourth the generic epithet is always in the upper case the first letter of genus should be in upper case whereas the specific epithet in, is in the lower case and the first letter is in the small letters let's take an example the scientific name for man is homo sapiens homo is the genus and sapiens is the species ne another few example are mangifera indica panthera tigris mangifera and panthera denotes the genus and it is in the upper case the first letter and indica or tigris is the species so it's in lower case now let's move on the classification of microorganism we use three domain a uh, six kingdom classification which was proposed by carus in 1977 the three domains are archaea bacteria and eukarya archaea includes extremophiles bacteria includes cyanobacteria and eubacteria whereas eukarya include protista fungi plantae and animal here is the chart as you can see what are the different domain and the kingdom inside them before we used to study uh, the five kingdom classification which was given by r h whitaker in which archaea and bacteria were included under monera kingdom as you can see here and this is a comparison between the three domain the five kingdom and six kingdom classification now let's study it in detail for the domain archaea the kingdom is archaebacteria the cell type is prokaryote primitive one the cell structure is a cell wall without peptidoglycan number of cells are unicellular mode of nutrition autotrophic or heterotrophic example methanogen halophiles thermoacidophiles second domain is the bacteria the kingdom is eubacteria the cell type is prokaryote primitive one cell structure cell wall with peptidoglycan number of cell is unicellular mode of nutrition is autotrophic or heterotrophic and example is streptococcus is cherisha coli or e coli now let's moving on eukarya eukarya have four different kingdom protista fungi plantae and animalia the cell type for all the four kingdom is eukaryotes the cell structure for protista is cell wall with cellulose in some and some have chloroplast the number of cell for protista is mostly unicellular whereas some are multicellular and some live in colonies mode of nutrition is autotrophic or heterotrophic example is amoeba paramecia slime molds or euglena for fungi the cell structure is cell wall with chitin number of cell mostly multicellular and few are unicellular mode of nutrition is heterotrophic example mushroom and yeast for plantae the cell structure is cell wall with cellulose and chloroplast number of cells are multicellular and they are autotrophic an example moss ferns and flowering plants for animalia the cell structure no cell wall is there number of cell multicellular mode of nutrition heterotrophic example sponge worms insect fishes mammals dog cat etc now let's study microbes and diseases some microorganism are pathogenic meaning they are disease causing organism whereas most of the microorganism are beneficial to us some of the example of pathogenic diseases from bacteria is ear infection food poisoning for viruses it is common cold or influenza virus for fungus it's the ringworm and for protista it's the malaria so there is a different field called medical microbiology that is a subdivision concerned with causative agent of infection diseases for humans and the response of the host to this infection and various method of diagnosis treatment and prevention this was all for this video next video is about the history of microbiology where we will discuss about various microbiologists who have contributed 
to develop this field if you like the video hit the like button comment what you want to see next share this video with your friend and subscribe to my channel you can also follow me on instagram at the red medical minion the link is in the description where you will find short notes and tricks as shown in this image see you in the next video thank you for watching